Royal Caribbean recently updated their main dining room menus, and let's just say those who are loyal to Royal are not happy with the changes. But are all the critiques really justified? We've just returned from our first Royal Caribbean cruise of 2023 and test out these menus, and we're back with our honest review up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, and a special welcome back to our Eat Sleep Cruise subscribers. Now, if you follow our channel, you know that we're big Royal Caribbean fans. We've actually been on over 25 Royal Caribbean cruises, and we've been sailing with the brand for over 16 years. So needless to say, we've had plenty of meals in the main dining room. And while that time, Royal Caribbean has tweaked with their menus, most recently they made major changes to the main dining room menus. And we finally were able to test them out and we're here to give you all the details. What we liked, what we didn't like, and where Royal Caribbean really let us down. Now before we dive into those details, we can actually start with a couple things Royal Caribbean hasn't changed with the main dining room menus, which might make you happy. For instance, the main dining room breakfast menu on Royal Caribbean ships has not changed. It still contains a number of classic breakfast options. Among the specialties are French toast and the breakfast burrito, along with other standard options. While dining times on Royal Caribbean ships do vary slightly based on ship and itinerary, cruisers will also be happy to know that breakfast is still available every single day in the main dining room. Likewise, Royal Caribbean didn't really touch the lunch menus in the main dining room either. Now, on most itineraries, the main dining room will host lunch on sea days and later port arrival days. So on a typical seven night Caribbean cruise, this usually means that lunch will occur twice in the main dining room. So the menu still contains classics like the spaghetti bolognese, the royal chicken sandwich, and steak frites on both days. Likewise, the sit down lunch in the main dining room is available for about an hour and a half on those sea days, usually running from around 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now, unlike breakfast and lunch, Royal Caribbean did make major changes to the main dining room dinner menus. Now, honestly, some of these changes we do like, whereas other changes, it really just let us down. Now, some cruisers might remember back in the day when Royal Caribbean did have themed menus, and they were usually themed around an ingredient like saffron or basil. And yes, I know, we're going back years. So we are happy to report that these new menus do now have a theme, which we do prefer over the previous menus, which seemed like a hodgepodge of items. This new theme is then central across the starters, entrees, and desserts. Now the rotation might change depending on your itinerary, but on a typical seven night cruise, the first menu cruisers are gonna see on these new menus is the welcome aboard dinner. Then most likely your second night is gonna be your first formal night. And that on our cruise was a taste of France. And don't worry, we're going to dive into the details of all of these menus in a little bit in this video, so stay tuned. On the third day of our cruise, we had a taste of Italy. On the fourth day, a taste of the Caribbean. Then we had a taste of Mexico. Now, on our cruise, our sixth night was our second formal night, and sometimes that's night five. But either way, that second formal night is going to be called the Royal Night. And then finally, night seven is the Bon Voyage Dinner. While Royal Caribbean did tinker with these menus, thankfully they did not change the usual dining setup. So Royal Caribbean cruise ships still now offer two options. They offer the traditional dining option or their my time dining. With the traditional dining, there's still those two seating times. An earlier time, usually between 5.30 and 6 p.m. And then a later seating, which is usually between 8 and 8.30. Now for those who are new to cruising, all traditional dinner really means is that you have the same table assignment and wait staff at that given time throughout your entire cruise. On the flip side, if you're looking for something more flexible, with my time dining, cruisers can dine at different times each night and with a different table configuration. Some cruise lines also refer to this as anytime dining or a freestyle approach to dining. Royal Caribbean does allow guests to make pre-cruise reservations each evening with my time dining, or cruisers can just walk up to the host without reservations. And I do know there are separate lines for those who have pre-made their reservations, so you have less of a wait than those who might be going standby and have to wait in a longer queue to actually get seated in the restaurant. Now, how did Royal Caribbean change the menu? Well, as we mentioned earlier, these new menus now feature themes. Although this doesn't necessarily mean that all the menu items align with the new name. For instance, while the Taste of the Caribbean menu offers a jerk seasoned pork chop, 
It also features a pesto tagliatelle dish, which I wouldn't necessarily say is very Caribbean. With the different themes, it does make it a little bit easier to plan your dinner. So you can look in the Royal Caribbean app throughout the week once you're on board and you can see your rotation. You can also see the menus, but you can quickly look and see, oh, this night's going to be the taste of the Caribbean. This night's going to be a taste of Mexico. So it helps you decide which nights you might want to dine in the main dining room versus going to a specialty restaurant or maybe something more casual like the Windjammer Buffet. So I actually do like that they're now named and themed versus the previous menus and felt just kind of thrown together. Now, while we do like the themes, one big letdown about these new menus is that there is no longer the nightly classic menu. For this change, the nightly classic menu stayed the same the whole cruise. So while the rest of the menu would rotate, these standard selections would be consistent throughout your cruise. So you always knew you could get something from that menu if the different menu items that were rotational didn't really appeal to you. Now, previously, the classics menu consisted of six starters, like a Caesar salad, shrimp cocktail, and escargot each night. Cruisers could then opt for one of four classic entrees as well, including roasted chicken or New York strip steak, as well as a salmon. And then there were six classic desserts, like the very popular apple blossom a la mode or the royal chocolate cake. But now those selections, well, they're long gone. Overall, this means that each night the menu is 30% smaller giving cruisers fewer options. Now I know this is a lot of math, but bear with me. So the previous menus used to contain 28 selections every single night. A total of 10 starters, so six that stayed the same and four that changed. Nine entrees, so four that stayed the same and five that changed. And then nine desserts. Six that stayed the same and then three that changed. Now the new menus include only six starters each evening, seven entrees, and six desserts. Now to be fair, even though Royal Caribbean removed the classic section, many of those dishes still appear on the new menus on various nights. For instance, I'm a big seafood lover and I used to love getting a shrimp cocktail every night. Well, now with the new menus, I can still enjoy shrimp cocktail, but just on four evenings. Likewise, having escargot every night used to be a big draw for loyal to Royal fans. Instead of getting it seven times during cruise, now you can only get it three nights for your cruise. And those include the welcome aboard and then the two formal nights at Taste of France and the Royal Night menus. Now in this test cruise, we're actually sailing with some family members and one of our family members loves salmon. So she used to know that she could always order the classic salmon if nothing else appealed to her on the menu. But now, unfortunately, salmon is only offered on three nights and it's prepared slightly differently each evening. And that's another trend that we saw that really let us down is that it felt like there weren't a lot of seafood options on these brand new menus. There were a few of them like the seafood linguine or the pan seared filet of sole. And it just felt like Royal Caribbean had kind of cut back on some of those upscale menu options. Now, while some of the classics did appear multiple times throughout the week, one menu item that was a go-to for all of us at the table that is completely gone was the cheese plate. Now, some may recall the cheese plate actually used to be a dessert. And years ago, we would request that as a starter. And then Royal Caribbean shifted it to the classic menu as a starter. And now it's completely gone. Now there is one bright spot, especially for my wife, Heidi, regarding the menus that we feel like has been updated since these menus rolled out. During our sailing on Harmony the Seas, the main dining room did offer a grilled chicken option each evening. Now each evening, there was usually some type of poultry based dish, like the turkey dinner on the last night or the chicken cordon bleu on night two in the Taste of France. But underneath those selections, there was a little asterisk indicating that a grilled chicken breast was available upon request. Now this was even true night one that had the typical fried chicken dish. She requested that she'd get the dish with grilled chicken thinking she'd get the same sides that normally come with the fried chicken but they actually brought her what looked like the pretty basic classics grilled chicken dish that used to be on the menu. So it seems like Royal Caribbean has made some accommodations, but they no longer have the classics like the steak or the spaghetti bolognese every night, but somehow have slipped back this grilled chicken. At least that's what it was like on Harmony the Seas. So while a lot of these changes did let us down, I have to admit some of the new menu items, well, they were actually better than some of the previous menu options. Now, I'm not really a picky eater. In fact, I love to eat. 
It is called Eat Sleep Cruise after all. But I do know several cruisers might be a little bit more picky about the food they eat or might have special dietary needs. So some of those cruisers will be happy to know that they have enhanced the vegetarian and vegan options on the main dining room menu. Royal Caribbean still also offers a completely separate vegetarian and allergy friendly menus as well. Some of the new featured vegetarian options on the main dining room include the spring pea and asparagus risotto, as well as the stuffed red bell pepper. And honestly, I didn't really test out any of these brand new vegetarian options. But what I did try were the new Indian dishes. And I was a little skeptical at first because honestly, we don't eat a lot of Indian food on land. Although I am a fan of Asian inspired food like sushi or Chinese takeout food. But I was pleasantly surprised. For me, these new Indian dishes were a great addition to the menu. Some of the menu items that I really enjoyed were the aromatic chicken saga and the shrimp Jalfrezi. And yes, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Now, while some of the classic entrees and starters do appear throughout the week, there are several other menu items found on these new menus that will be familiar to Royal Caribbean cruisers. They're just on different nights or parts of different themes. For example, night one, that welcome aboard dinner still includes one of my staple go-tos, the prime rib. And the second formal night, the Royal night, still has the hallmark lobster tail. Although Royal Caribbean has changed their lobster tail policy. So what am I talking about? Well, now in 2023, if you want to order an additional lobster tail beyond the first one on formal night, it will cost you $16.99. So long gone are the days where you could have two, three, or my parcel record for the Caribbean lobster tails. Royal Caribbean has tried to offset this, saying that these lobster tails are better quality than the previous ones that they used to have. But we'll let you be the judge. You can check it out here. To me, this lobster tail looks basically like the offerings you used to get on the old Royal Caribbean main dining room menus. Now we've already pointed out some of the changes that really disappoint us. And while some of these other changes might sound like bad news, Honestly, in our opinion, it really wasn't. When compared to our last cruise with Royal Caribbean at the end of 2022 with the old main dining room menus, we actually thought the food was much better on Harmony of the Seas, the preparation as well as the selection. For instance, the pork chop that I had on the Taste of Caribbean Night was a thick cut with plenty of spicy seasoning. And that prime rib from night one, the welcome board dinner was roasted to an ideal medium rare temperature and served juicy and warm. Of course, on night three, Heidi had to test out the chicken parmesan, and in her opinion, it was maybe about the same or slightly better than the previous chicken parmesan that she's had on other Royal Caribbean ships like Navigator or Wonder of the Seas earlier in the year. Actually, for that menu, I tried the creamy mushroom risotto, which was a different offering for me. And while it's very similar to a menu item that Royal Caribbean used to have, I actually thought it was pretty good. It was definitely very creamy and full of flavor. As we mentioned, Royal Caribbean considerably cut back when it comes to desserts. And honestly, we're often not really impressed with the main dining room desserts on most cruise ships, especially Royal Caribbean. However, some of the new options like the peanut caramel bar and the welcome aboard menu were better than expected. The Italian hazelnut chocolate cake, which was essentially a lava cake with sliced hazelnuts, was pretty good as well. And of course, you can't go wrong with the warm apple cobbler either which was served on the Bon Voyage menu, so that last night of the cruise. Now you might be wondering, why did Royal Caribbean make these changes in the first place? Well, our friend Matt from the Royal Caribbean blog actually interviewed Lincoln D'Souza, which is the global head and vice president of food and beverage for Royal Caribbean Group. Now, according to Lincoln, that these changes were made to help streamline the process in the kitchen. So to help make things more efficient to get cruisers in and out of dinner quicker, as well as to reduce food waste. And of course, it makes sense that if you're preparing less food, there's less food that you're gonna throw away at the end of the evening. So we get that. But when it comes to actually making things more efficient and quicker in the main dining room, honestly, that wasn't the case during our cruise. Our table of four was never out of the main dining room in under 90 minutes. Admittedly, we did eat three solid courses each night and ordered at least a few rounds of drinks. So we might be atypical but the main dining room seemed to function just like any other Royal Caribbean cruise. But obviously with fewer menu items and cutting back on some of those more upscale options like seafood or even removing the duck, which was another staple you used to find on the first formal night menu, 
obviously making all these changes and reductions helps Royal Caribbean save money. And let's be honest, maybe it was a little overkill to have a menu each night that had 28 different items, especially so many starters and desserts. So overall, we were a bit disappointed that some of our favorite menu items weren't available every night or were just removed from the menus altogether. In general, we did enjoy the new Royal Caribbean main dining room menus, even though my wife Heidi is a picky eater. We thought the new selections offered some great and much needed diversity into the lineup of food options. The food quality was also improved in our opinion, and the overall preparation was a notch above what we come to expect from Royal Caribbean. So I will give Lincoln and the Royal Caribbean Food and Beverage Department some credit in saying that maybe reducing the menu does allow the chefs and the galley cooks more time to prepare each dish so the food does taste better and is fresher quality. So while we've heard a lot of negative feedback from those loyal to Royal cruisers, we have to disagree based on our recent experience on Harmony the Seas. And admittedly, it might be just that we're looking through things from rose colored glasses. This was the first time that we tested out this menu and part of our preference for this menu just could be the novelty of it. However, we suggest you go into your next Royal Caribbean cruise with an open mind and you test out the new main dining room menus on your own and form your own opinions. And if you do, let us know in the comments section below if you prefer the new main dining room menus or the old main dining room menus. Now we've talked all about the dining of course on Harmony of Seas, but if you know us, you know we have a complete review detailing our entire experience on Harmony of the Seas right here on YouTube. In that review, we of course talk about the dining, but not just the main dining room, we talk about casual eats and the specialty restaurants, as well as every other aspect of Harmony of the Seas, from the entertainment, to the onboard activities, staterooms, and more. We share our honest review of Harmony of the Seas to help you decide if that ship's right for your next cruise vacation.